My dad works in B2B marketing. He came by my school for career day and said he was a big ROAS man. Then he told everyone how much he loved calculating his return on ad spend. My friends still laugh at me to this day. Not everyone gets B2B, but with LinkedIn, you'll be able to reach people who do. Get $100 credit on your next ad campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash results to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash results. Terms and conditions apply. LinkedIn, the place to be, to be. Empire. Hello and welcome to my podcast. Do me a favor, subscribe to the John Kyle Report. Wherever you get your podcast, you're watching on YouTube, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. You can find us there as part of Empire Media, A-M-P-I-R-E. Always much appreciated when you tune in. Don't forget, you can read my work on ESPN.com. I have a few stories up now, a lot on Jaden Daniels. Also, some injury updates for you that I'm going to get to in a minute that you've probably already read by now. Anyways, but I want to just kind of fill you in on some stuff. For you gold members, I'm going to be doing a private Zoom at 4, excuse me, I say 4.30, I'm at Pacific time. So 7.30 Eastern time on Friday. I'm back to Friday this week because I don't know what time I'm going to be done on Thursday. So it's much better to arrange it for Friday. I know by that point I'll be done. And it's going to be about 106 or 7 degrees at that time on Friday out here, at, which is be 4.30 p.m. Pacific time. I don't want to be outside at that point. So we're going to be doing the Zoom, private Zoom, 7.30 Eastern time. Um, and uh, we'll go from there. So Hope you enjoy it. And again, I'm going to be arranging for a player to join us, uh, ex player to join us soon and bring someone else in there to get a different perspective or bring your questions. Those are always good conversations. And I hope you guys get something from them and the, the members who listen to it later. Hope you learn something as well. Anyways, let's get to practice report because I'm here out in Arizona. You can see I'm stuck in a hotel room and it's such a glamorous living that we leave um, live. And um, so here we go. For the practice report, so you already probably know that Austin Eckler is not going to play in Sunday's game. He's been ruled out with the concussion. What we knew on Tuesday is that he was going to stay in Virginia. Well, once you're back there and like they're out here, you're not sending him out there. So he's been ruled out. Um, not a big surprise. I mean, I don't think anybody really thought he'd probably play because that when you get it in a short week, it just makes it a lot harder to recover. So the goal would be to get him back for the Cleveland game, but we, which is the following week. But we don't know that. We don't know anything about that at this point. What we do know is he's out for for um, Sunday. And then the other guy out is defensive end Cleveland Farrell. Uh, Dan Quinn ruled him out. He's got the knee issue. Now, I did ask Quinn, is this something that is going to necessitate a longer time? They really seem to be confident that he would be back for the Cleveland game. Um, so with in, in his place, and I'll get to Eckler's replacements in a minute, but in his place, they're going to run a, a few guys, right? They had Dante Fowler in there. They had Andre Jones in there. You had Javante Jean-Baptiste in there. You had Jamin Davis in there at times. I mean, he's out there. Some of those guys are part of the rotation anyways, obviously, but you can fill in with different ways. They also would put John Allen or Deron Payne at end two and have a three defensive, three tackle alignment at times with Johnny Newton in there too. So there are ways you can kind of compensate. Farrell's done a, did a nice job just as a, he's a run stopper guy. He obviously has a couple sacks, but he's really a run stopper. And, you know, that's, it's a group that just hasn't, it's the defense hasn't played well. So anybody you miss is going to be something, but I'm curious to see how a guy like Jean Baptiste progresses. Andre Jones had a couple plays the other day that were pretty good. Um, and so we'll see. Now, as far as Eckler goes, they're losing something when they don't have him. And I mean, what he has shown in, um, is that he can still play and he can also help you in multiple ways. As Dan Quinn said, he's really good at taking those five and six yard passes and turning them into 20 yard gains. And it's not like it's a big strike down the field, but 20 yards is 20 yards. And it's funny because when you watch him, and I talked about this after the first game and just watching how, when he catches the ball, how he turns up field and just why is a guy like that explosive? And, 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 you know, it's, it's the way he gets his body turned around. So it's almost like, I think I told you like a drop step in basketball. So you just turn and you get up field. Well, you watch other backs. They don't always do that. This is something he does very well, but it leads to all those extra yards. So, and then also the kick returns, like he does a really good job there. And it's funny because with some of those returns, um, whether it's on kickoff, especially on kickoffs, that and I was talking to some guys here about this, that even in practice when they're trying to cover my kickoffs, they'd sometimes lose them because Eckler is small. Like he's, 
I don't know, he's probably closer to five, six, five, seven um, than whatever he's listed. I'm not even sure what he's listed at, but he's not a big guy. So you can lose him behind those lines and that gives him an advantage they, that it's harder to see him sometimes. And, and so, and he's really quick with his cuts. So that combination is something that they will miss. So how do you replace him? Well, they have Jeremy McNichols. McNichols. We saw what he did on that touchdown pass to Terry McLaurin, picking up the blitzing linebacker. I mean, that was as good a, a block as you're going to see, especially given the situation that, that it transpired in. So he'll be one of the guys, you can always call it Chris Rodriguez. They, they know that Brian Robinson can do more than just run the ball but it's good to give guys a break. So, but they can throw the ball to Robinson as well. The hard part though, is the way they were using Eckler and Robinson together. That was a really good combination. Even if it's only like seven to 10 times a game, it's a good combination for those seven to 10 times. And you would see guys multiple times when they use that to those two guys together, you would see how they could fool the defense with that by sending Eckler in motion um, by you know just the, the the action of the play after the snap, they really took advantage of the defense not sure who's going to get the ball and where. You know they can both do things out of the backfield, and so I think that's where that's something that you're going to miss that versatility. You you can put another guy out there; it doesn't mean the defense is going to respond the same way. So I don't know. I'll be curious to see how they handle that, but that's what they can do there. But again, you really. You're talking about having a need, needing a couple guys to replace an Eckler because of what he also does in the return game as well. So um, also today, J, or excuse me, on, on Wednesday, Wednesday Jaden Daniels was named the NFC Offensive Player of the Week. That's the first time someone from this organization has been honored since Adrian Peterson in 2018 and the last quarterback or the first quarterback since Kirk Cousins in um, 2017. So a pretty big honor for a guy who just a couple weeks ago was named the offensive the offensive rookie of the week so just continues to do what i think everybody had hoped there had hoped he would do he's doing it is he doing it quicker i guess but you know i would say this as someone who's covered him since the from the start in the spring and through the summer i'm not surprised that he's off to a good start because it's just kind of who he is and you didn't see the struggles and you saw you saw a certain series where it wasn't as good or certain this or it wasn't as good, maybe a day, but you didn't see a prolonged struggle ever with him. And so that's why it's like, that's not a surprise. He's off to a good start. You know, and there's only, there's, there's still a lot more they can do. I mean, he has two touchdown passes. That's going to probably get better. And, but the key is too, that he's not turning it over. That's why this team is two and one because of what they've done offensively, but they're not turning it over. Now you're not forcing your turnovers but you're not turning it over and it's go with a rookie quarterback to have, to be in that situation, pretty damn good. So I, I just, and I, I reiterate this, that all the talk about McLaurin has to get the ball more. What didn't he do? He didn't force it to him and that's maturity. So you've heard me talk about this. I don't want to harp on that too much, but I do think that that's something that stands out then. So we're talking today and obviously we're out here in Arizona. We're back um, where he played college ball. Um, but before I get to I mean, you know, the Arizona State stuff, that's interesting for the people in there around here. I've got to believe it's a little bit odd for him to be back on campus because he did transfer and there were some people here who weren't happy. But he was a guy that fans loved when he was here. And it's easy to see why. I mean, the, the playing ability, um, the personality and all that. So. But so I'm sure it's a little bit odd for him to be here, but a lot of what we're talking about is just what's going on here with, with Washington. And, and it's funny because we asked Bobby Wagner was talking about Daniels and just how he responded to that game Monday night. And he comes into the facility today out here. And he's like, he's like, I just, he clearly, you know, had his head down going to work already. Like he saw him, you know, you see him in the, in the playbook or, or whatever you're doing, but he's working. And so you turn that page. And the one thing that Daniels said a couple of times is that, it was just another game. In other words, yes, a lot of good things happen in that game, but it's only one game. So you build and you build and you build. And now um, he's had three pretty, you know, two good games and a third that's for a rookie was pretty good. And so you just keep building on it. But if you just, if you get caught up in what you just did, you're not going to advance because humility, you know, um, <laughs> is always around the corner here. So there's always a right around the corner is, you know, just is a, is a chance to go, you take your career in a different direction. And I don't think he wants to do that. So 
that's why he's just like, it was just another game, another game, another, another day, another dollar. Um, and it's about going to work. And it's funny because, you know, there were, there was, this is always sometimes kind of fun to see how the other veterans react to a guy like this, because, you know, Bobby Wagner goes out there and starts kind of heckling them from afar and um, chiding them a little bit. And, um, and he tried, you know, Jaden's kind of just kind of smiling sheepishly and trying to ignore it. Just trying to come back with a little bit of something hard to do that with Wagner. Wagner went toe to toe back in the day with guys like Richard Sherman, um, you know, Cam Champs. So those, that, that was kind of, you know, the strong mind, a strong will group in, in Seattle when he was a rookie doing that and they would test him. So I don't, you know, he's not gonna, he's not gonna lose a little verbal chiding to, to Jaden Daniels at this point. Um, then the linemen walk by, a group of the linemen walk by, Allegretti, Wiley, a few others, and they're kind of yelling to him and all that. But I think what you see is a team that seems to really like being together. Now, is, does that matter? Well, yeah. And how much can that help in terms of wins and losses? Well, it doesn't hurt. I will say that. And, you know, um, I think it's funny because I think with, even with Quinn that the feeling you get is that, you know, guys like playing for him for sure. And nobody wants to let the guy down. So I think, you know, that's just something that um, that was something I was talking about with Chick Hernandez from Channel 9, just like that's the stuff you hear. So, you know, and, and that matters. Like Joe Gibbs had that. I'm not saying that Dan Quinn is Joe Gibbs. There's a hell of a long way to go. And, and Gibbs was just is a different level of coach than anybody I've ever covered. Um, but in terms of like how the players react to them, like the not wanting to let a guy down, you certainly see some of that in here. I also think that he did, he's done a good job surrounding himself with coaches who are, have similar mindset and approaches that he does. So that's where it starts to filter down. I think, you know, Ron Rivera was a guy that play, a lot of players respected and, and liked, but I don't think he surrounded himself with the coaches that demanded that or not or commanded that sort of same level of respect, right? Whereas I think Quinn has done a better job with that. Looking to invest? Start your journey by exploring exchange-traded funds with Global X ETFs. Exchange-traded funds, or ETFs for short, create baskets of stocks, bonds, and other assets that you can buy in a single trade. Global X specializes in ETFs that track emerging trends, like the rise of artificial intelligence, as well as strategies aimed to generate income potential. Visit GlobalXETFs.com to discover how you can get started. George Clooney and Brad Pitt's new movie, Wolves, is on Apple TV Plus September 27th. That's where I want you to be now. So if you want to see George Clooney and Brad Pitt, go to Apple TV Plus. You got to start the story there. Or if you want to see Brad Pitt and George Clooney, go to Apple TV Plus. I am enjoying the show. And if you want to see their new movie, Wolves, you can't do it, we'll help you out. I can do it. So do it. Definitely go to Apple TV Plus. Admit it is cool. Okay, fine. It was very cool. Wolves, streaming September 27th on Apple TV Plus. Rated R. TD, Tutty, in for six. Touchdowns matter more at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. We don't care how they score them. We want to bet on touchdowns, and DraftKings Sportsbook is delivering. Ready to place your first bet? Try betting on something simple like a player to score a touchdown. Go to DraftKings Sportsbook app and make your pick. Ready to do a touchdown dance of your own? New DraftKings customers bet $5 to get 200 in bonus bets instantly. Score big with DraftKings Sportsbook, the number one place to bet touchdowns. Download the Sportsbook app and use code KIME, that's code KIME, K-E-I-M, for new customers to get $200 in bonus bets when you bet just 5 bucks. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook, the crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope ny 467 369 in connecticut help is available for problem gambling call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org please play responsibly on behalf of boot hill casino and resort kansas 21 plus age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction void in ontario bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance for additional terms and responsible gaming resources see dkng.co slash ftball The other thing we, we've talked about too, like, you know, there are a lot of people out there talking about uh, Jaden Daniels on social media. Aaron Rodgers talked about him. I mean, pl players praising him and what, you know, what they saw on Monday night. And it's funny because he's like, you know, that matters to him, that guys that he's looked up to or whatever, that they're saying this. But it's funny because he doesn't get overly impressed with himself. I think he knows how, he clearly knows what he can do and how good he is and can be. 
but he said, you know, that's you, I think he plays for different reasons than for that. I mean, he wants to be really good, but then he also says that, you know, what matters to him too, is that maybe there was a kid who turned on the game for the first time Monday night and could get inspired by something he did. And I think that's, that's the kind of stuff that comes out and that's not fake. I've been around some guys who would say stuff like that. And you're like, well, yeah, I think you're kind of BSing, but I don't, you don't get that sense with Daniels um, at all. So, but I just think that's kind of who he is. You, the other thing like Dan Quinn talked about with, with Daniels is the ability to connect with teammates. And it goes back to what I said earlier about guys walking by and chiding and all that. It's a good natured situation. And, and they, they like that the way he works, they like, you know, they like that when um, after a field goal, the first guy off the field to greet him is Jaden Daniels. They greet the hole, they greet Tressway, greet, you know, the kicker, greet everybody. So I think some little things like that do matter to guys because they pay attention to that. And it's not all about him. It's about the team. And it's why I always go back to when he says he wants to do his 111. Well, that 111 the other night was being kind of Superman, but that was his job. And he filled his job just like somebody else did their job. And so I think there's when you have that approach and you don't put yourself above others, if you as if you maintain that, it's going to go a long way to have some long term success. And the, it's funny because the other thing you said about the game is like, you know, about I mean, he you really you're a young man. You have to, at least in your private moments, feel like, man, that was something you can be excited. You can, you can be geeked. But you've got to keep things in perspective for yourself because the goal is not to just the goal in the coming in the NFL wasn't to have a great game against Cincinnati Monday night. The goal was to become a great player. And you don't become that if you become too impressed with yourself. So and even he said, you know, the game, the games in the past, quote, don't mean nothing no more. Now, that's so that's the mindset. It's it's over. Move on because he has. And that's that's how you get better. So um, the other thing is like. So the practice setup here is a little bit not funky, but it's just, you know, it's not what we're used to. It's 107 degrees outside. So the practice in a bubble. So that's fine, right? It's it's one bubble. And um they brought all the, they brought a lot of stuff from Virginia here to to do it. Nothing more needs to be said. It's football practice. But I what I think it also speaks to though is the new era with owner Josh Harris, because we know that he spent a lot of money. Coming out here for the week is not cheap. Because you're housing how many players, like there's 70 players or so, and then you have all the coaches and, and you know the staffers and all that. It's a lot of, it's a big expense. And I don't know that it happens in the previous ownership because it, we, it never did happen. This was a rare, a unique situation, but it does seem like something that was done for the, to help the players, first of all, recover. You don't have to fly back and then fly back out. Three days later. So, but I think it's it does cost some money, and Josh Harris ponied it up. What's up? Before you board your flight, where'd we get that incredible ganochi? Hold up. Did you just call gnocchi ganochi? G- no. You're at the airport. No way you can hear me. Actually, with my new Galaxy Buds 3 Pro from Samsung, I can hear everything. Now boarding. Gotta go. I'll bring you back some ganochi. <laughs> Tune into what matters using adaptive active noise cancellation with Galaxy AI. Get Buds 3 Pro now at Samsung.com. Galaxy AI features require compatible Samsung Galaxy phone and initial setup via Samsung Wear app. In this ad for the Mobile One brand, I have 30 seconds to talk about driving, which might be what you're doing right now. Maybe you're in the car, you're free, you're in control, on an open road with an open calendar. Your mind is wandering and you're going with it. Or maybe you're stuck at work, in meetings, or emails, or worse, Meetings about emails. And if that's the case, there's only one question. Why? Mobile One, for the love of driving. Visit loveofdriving.us slash radio to learn more. Hey, it's Bram Weinstein here, voice of the commanders. And of course, frequent guest of this podcast, The John Kime Report. I wanted to let you all know that my show, which airs at 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. on ESPN 630, is now exclusively produced by Empire Media, my company, and is going to be distributed through our network. So I'm asking you, please, if you subscribe to this show and love this show, give mine a try as well. Subscribe to The Bram Weinstein Show wherever you get your podcasts. And many of the shows and many of the elements that are in the show will be available on the Empire Media YouTube channel. We're going to talk a ton of commanders and other DC sports. Check it out. 
So we talked. We also talked to Mike Samra still too. And one thing to know, first of all, he played a lot of the out, outside corner the other night, and we saw the touchdown pass a lot to, to, to Mar Chase. But he did come back, and he still makes plays. And I think part of the thing they like about well, I know the thing we've talked about this, but they love the, of the kind of competitor he is, and you see that. And I said this back in training camp, like I don't. He's not going to be an outside corner here. When this is all said and done, whether it's this year, next year, or whatever, Dan Quinn tends to get big corners. But one thing you can take to the bank with Samuel is he's a really good competitor. So if you don't have better options, I'm putting my one of my best competitors on anybody because you know if nothing else, like well, they gonna, are they going to succeed every play? No, he's not. He's not Deion Sanders. He's not Daryl Green. But you know what you're going to get out of him, and that's why, like I'm telling you, he is not a big guy. And sometimes I watch him, like he's playing inside, and when he goes in the slot, like you're inside and you're going up against, you're basically like a, a line, almost you know, almost like a linebacker at times. He's not big, so how do you survive in there? You compete and you watch him take on guys. And it's really impressive. So if you're going to take, like, I need a guy who I know can go out there and just do this. He'll do that. Now, again, it may not be, Jamar Chase is really damn good. So you're going to give up touchdown. Benjamin St. Juice gave up on one to him later. So you're going to get beat by those guys, but you need a guy who's out there to compete because, and even Sam still said, you know, Daryl Green told him about the 10 second rule. Give yourself 10 seconds or whatever by the time you walk to the bench. You know, get it all out, yell at yourself, do this. But when you sit down, you've got to move on. Because if you don't move on, you're going to have a short career in this game. So I think he does that very well. And I think that's one reason why they put him out there um, for sure. And I think, again, ultimately, you you want him inside. I think that's where he's going to fit best. But till until then, you put him where you need him. And I, I will say, Emmanuel Forbes is probably going to play on Sunday. So they could always go back to Forbes and St. Juice. My guess is that's probably what they'll do. Don't know that for sure, but it makes sense. But if something happens with Forbes, if he's struggling a little bit, then you can make your changes. Because Igbenogany, I think, no, Igbenogany, I think he's done a nice job when he's been in there. So you can go, you can roll with that group if you need to, if, if Forbes isn't, isn't handling his business um, for sure. So I, I think... I think that's that's a good thing for them. And especially uh, the funny thing is like this week, you have one receiver that you really have to be concerned about with Marvin Harrison Jr. And I'll talk more about him later in the week. Um, the other thing we know is the defense needs to be fixed. I mean, it hasn't been good. And I know people are like, why aren't you asking about it? Because first of all, Jaden Daniels is a story this week. Like, like, you know, we know there are other problems. It doesn't mean that people are ignoring them just because they're not, like, the team knows what the issues are. They don't need us to remind them. And because they aren't very good on defense, um, I will say, would you rather have a really good defense, right? Because this roster is not full this ro or, or finished by any means. And nobody should have come into the season feeling like a lot of like everything was fixed and not saying that you did. But if you did, you shouldn't think like that because they're not at that point in the development of this roster of this group. If you can say like you you want to have you want to find your corners you want to find your quarterback well I'm going to take the quarterback because they haven't had one in forever we've seen some good defenses here that we haven't seen consistently good quarterback play for a long time and so um, not to say you shouldn't want both but I think when you're building it the, when you're building a program what do you gonna, what do you want to see first and so um, now having said that. Defense has, but needs to be better. We know that because you go into Saturday, Sunday's game against Arizona, you can't rely on Jaden Daniels and the offense to score points on every drive. Like it's a tough, they've won two games because of that. And that's a tough way to live. So you're going to have to create stops and turnovers. And they know this, like they know they're going to punt again. They know there's going to be turnovers at some point. So you need the defense to do its part. And it has not. So it's funny because in preparation for this, I've been watching Cardinals will watch them against Detroit. And what stood out to me with Detroit, and they have a really good defense. They play fast in the front and they they are in their gaps. And you're not seeing that here. You're seeing, like I even asked Dan Quinn, are you guys playing with the speed you want to? And the answer right now is no. And it, it's clear to see that. And they're also not filling gaps or guys are getting out of gaps. And it's, it's consistently something wrong, right? And sometimes, again, it could be the math. It could be you're going to keep two safeties deep. Well, you know, you may sometimes have a gap that's not filled, but it's not always that. It's sometimes, it's a lot of things, but I don't think they're playing to the speed that they need to. And you know who agrees with that? Dan Quinn. And because he said, um, 
uh, you know, they're, they're not. And it's like, it's, what did he say? What did he say? Let me tell you what he said. Um, it's not where we'll end up. And he said, we, we, um, not, we're not to the space where we'll be. And so I think, but he also agreed, like they're not playing the speed they need to yet because it's still, I know you don't want to hear it's new, but that is, it's only three games. But my, my thing is too, with that, well, then you, you need to see consistent improvement. Are we going to see that? And it, it is funny because there are sometimes even last week against the Bengals where there are a couple of runs where like, all right, this guy makes the tackle back here. It's a two yard loss, but they miss the tackle and it's a 12 yard gain. So that's sometimes the difference between the stats looking better or not. But the the problem is that quarterbacks are picking them apart on third down too. So that's going to, that's got to stop. So if it doesn't stop, you know, you're, you're going to have to do something about it. And they, it's not like they just do a straight full man rush every time I'm seeing some stunts. I saw some, you know, some different action or whatever, and there's some different alignments, but it just hasn't worked. So they have to, you know, they, they have some guys who are young, some guys are new, some guys who are this, it's got to be better. And so that, but don't worry, like it is something they know and it is something that is obvious, but, you know, um, I think for right now, you need to get better. That's all, that's all there is to it. But right now though, I do think that there's so much focus on Jade Daniels because of the importance of that position, obviously, but it doesn't mean that people are ignoring the other stuff. It just means that the story this week is Jaden Daniels. And when you're out, like, for example, we're out at a press conference, we only get two questions. And just because someone else asked two questions about Jaden Daniels, it may mean that like, well, that's fine. But for my story, I need this angle or this quote. We don't all write the same angle on a story. So what someone else needs may be complementary to what I need, but it may not, but I may still need more to flesh out something else. So that's why I say the story this week is down. It doesn't mean that people think like, oh, well, the defense is great. No, they're not. We know that. But I'm writing to my story and as are other people. Cliff Kingsbury coming back to Arizona, that's also a story. Um, you know, so I think there's a lot of things they need to look at that. But the story on the defense is not playing is not playing fast, getting out of gaps, and sometimes that's discipline, et cetera. Um, and you know, or sometimes just, you know, could be technique, it could be confusion, whatever it is, but they're not playing to the speed they need to just yet. So it, and again, if it doesn't get better, then you're gonna need Jade Daniels and the offense to never punt again if you want to do more than just look good at times. So anyway, that's it for me. Um, a reminder, I will be back on Friday morning with another episode. I'm hoping to get up a special guest for that. But I also will have um, ESPN's Josh Weinfuss to talk about the Cardinals, Kyler Murray, his take on Cliff Kingsbury, and then see if he remembers Jaden Daniels at Arizona State since he's based out here and what his return here means um, and what the perception of him is around here. But a lot, again, Kingsbury was it just, I'm curious, like the offense that he ran there. And I had Josh on in the off season at when, when Kingsbury was hired, but I am curious to always get his input or his opinion on all of this. So, and I also do my five things this weekend as well. So anyway, that's it for me. You gold members, 7.30 Eastern time on Friday. And I will, I'll, I'll be back with another episode on Friday for everybody else. We'll talk to you next time.